It's not only frightening, Glenn, but there's one step in this whole, when we talk about the promise system. Hold on, hold on, hold on, because we'll get to that here in just a second. And what do you say to people who say, oh, it's no big deal? That next. Ay, ay, ay. Brad Thor is here. You know, when you listen to this program, there's always a stack of books that you have to read. He just gave me another one, Search and Destroy. Um, Brad's book, The Full uh, of uh, Full Black, it's a thriller. Brad's one of my favorite authors. This is a fantastic book. If you have been trying to convince yourself or convince your friends, you got to watch Glenn Beck. you got to listen. Now, I'm telling you, what he's saying is true. And they just think because it's Glenn Beck, that it's just not going to, you know, oh, that's crazy. You have them read Full Black because it's everything that we have said and much more um, in the last two years. You have them read it. And then when they close and say, man, that was a great book, start talking to them just about the book. Hey, um, so what would you think about that? Huh? Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's true. What would you think about that character? Yeah, that's George Soros. I mean, it's or not. It's, it's startlingly, 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 coincidentally, coincidentally, exactly it, like. Interesting anyway, um, you have that conversation with him. The name of the book is Full Black uh, by Brad Thor. Okay, so Brad, in the book, yeah, you we were talking about Promise and Tips, which is not the real name, but Promise you can look up, and you don't find very much on Promise. Um, these are software systems. You say Promise is the Terminator, and Tips is Skynet. Correct. Um, and, and then we've go got what. The, here's the here's the the link for anybody who says, ah, you know what? I can't believe this. I can't believe this. There is a. We all know J. Edgar Hoover kept all his files, right? Yes. Had files on everybody. You think the government stopped doing that? You think it, there is something? And this is one of the reasons why the government is pushing through so hard with this deal with with Google. From what my people have said. There is something that the government develops called Main Core. And what Main Core is, is it's a database of over 8 million Americans that the government believes could be a threat to its existence, to national security. And this is full profiles on over 8 million Americans that exist in this database with all of that backup data that was garnered through promise. Do you think I'm in that backup database? Pardon me? Do you think I'm in that database? Yeah, and thankfully I'm on the way. I'm hanging a piece of fruit on your relationship tree, and I'm probably in it as well. <laughs> Low hanging fruit. So eight, that, eight million Americans are in this database. Yeah, called Main Core. And the idea behind this database is that in a time of national emergency, you can see on the radio, I'm holding my fingers up, making the quotation marks. In a time of a crisis, which you wouldn't want to ever let go to waste, these people could then be grabbed. We would know where they are. We would know what the case is we want to make against them because in a time of national emergency or crisis, they could be a threat to the government. So therefore, let's go grab them. Let's hold on to them. Let's detain them. May I just say, Brad, uh, yes. this ties into something that was never addressed um, fully. There were questions asked about it. They verified it, and then they moved on. The press was fine with it. And it was a, a, if I'm not mistaken, this is about a year and a half ago, an executive order, I believe, uh, and it went to, uh, I, can't rem I can't remember all the details. Stu, look this up. But remember, there was an executive order, I think, that was uh, pushed through where the president said that there are, there's a list of people that um, can be uh, terminated, if you will, that are a threat both in and out of the United States. And the only one they used by name was that guy in Yemen the American citizen, but these were American citizens. Oh, yeah, it was the, assassin the assassination, the assassination order. order. Right, and right. the, the al -Waki. And, you know, this is what's very interesting, is that under President Bush, he signed a presidential directive stating that we were in a national emergency. And Obama re-signed it, re-upped it. This thing has been around for, we're going on 10 years now. This is being, there's a lot of these presidential directives and stuff that the mainstream media just isn't interested in or for some reason just won't pursue. So there's a lot of this stuff. Okay. So, I, I'm not, uh, Brad, t take, 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 answer, because there are people that are listening right now who say, and, and quite honestly, if I refuse to um, uh, look at the future, you know, um, Ben Sherwood gave a, now Ben Sherwood I think is the president of ABC News. Um, uh, now at least he is he, he wrote this uh, great book called The Survivors Club and the survivors, he went and he looked at all the different survivors uh, you know, from wars to uh, disasters to big and small 
And what did they all have in common? And one of the things that they all had in common was they were willing to look outside of the box. They were willing to say, you know what, this plane could catch on fire. You know what, this, this, I, I could slip and fall. There, this could happen. And so they looked outside the box and saw the realm of possibilities. And they didn't live their life in a paranoid way. They just looked at the realm of possibilities and saw these things could happen. I'm not saying they are happening. They could, and they're becoming more and more realistic every day. How do you uh, uh, say this, or how do you answer to the people who say, this is ridiculous, this is America, it will never happen here? Well, it is happening. I mean, you, you only have to look outside. There's so many different examples, Glenn, of the government. But it, at the very basic level of this is that when you give up any of your liberty, you will never see it again. So this can go into many different areas. It can be gun ownership. You know, we want you to have all of your guns registered. And then they use, we just have an example in Illinois where the state attorney in Illinois was suing the state police. This is how bad our government has gotten when the government sues, branches of the government sue each other. The state attorney in Illinois, Lisa Madigan, was suing the Illinois state police because the Illinois state police would not turn over the uh, database of who owns a firearms uh, owner identification card. And the scuttlebutt was they believed the state attorney general was going to use that database and balance against her database of who has registered firearms to say, okay, who has a firearm owner's card but no firearms? This is the kind of stuff that is going on in the world where you don't have to commit a crime or you don't have to be sticking up a bank, but they're they're trying, listen, there's so many regulations, so many stupid laws, everybody is guilty of something. And they are now starting to hone in, narrow in, and, and just nail every single person they can find out there. Um, you know, it's never really fun talking to you, Brad. Um, <laughs> I never leave more optimistic after a conversation with Brad Thor. Um, um, one last question. Yes. I have been um, feeling for a while the uh, unplug, unplug. Now, I'm in the internet, radio, television, communications business. Um, How does someone unplug in today's world? How do you not become part of Skynet? Well, you you first have to come to realization that this, this quaint image of you leave a digital footprint is not true. It's like I said, you leave a digital shadow, which means if they know the position of the sun, they know where you're standing. There's a lot of good information out there. You know, I, in Glenn, and I appreciate how much you've, you've, you've said about full black. I think if people read Search and Destroy about Google, they'd get a great idea about if you have a Gmail account or anything like that, what Google is able to do with your Gmail. It, it is a learning process like anything else where people have to do their own homework. Yeah, if you've got the GPS enabled on your phone, well, guess what? That tells people where you are every single moment of the day. And you don't have to be someone who intends to, to commit a crime. You know, something that is innocuous and normal and uh, acceptable at some point could get turned into a crime. I mean, we're racing in that direction. Is is there any doubt in your mind that if this technology existed in the 1930s, there wouldn't be a Jew or uh, or... Uh, at the in 1946, a Jew or a, a homosexual or someone who stood a gypsy, a, a gypsy yeah, you, there wouldn't be one alive, would there? Glenn, this is what scares me: is with all the research I did for Full Black to to read these stories after stories about dissidents that were hunted and killed using a software program to help locate them. I thought, you know what? The history of mankind is tyranny. We are an exception, and things are. They're unraveling a little bit here. I'm not saying this is going to happen tomorrow, but the possibility is there if we don't stand fast and fight back against this. Brad Thor, the name of the book is Full Black. Uh, Can't recommend it highly enough. Thank you very much, Brad. We'll talk again. Thanks, buddy. Um, I I, I will tell you this. Uh, Somebody asked me last night, um, you know, how's your experience with this Israel thing going? How are you feeling? And um, a little overwhelmed, a little overwhelmed. We are... um, now, I, I, I don't know how many millions still in the uh, red, um, and uh, it, is, it is a very, it's just, a, it's just an intense situation. But if I had to pull one thing away from it at this point that I, would, it, that I wish I could really truly explain, I wish you could experience it the way I have, because I don't think, I think this is something that will not impact you as much as it has me, because you're not living it every day. The one thing that I have learned um, that I am, uh, I wish I could express to you is how precious freedom is. 
we have these viewing parties that are happening for um, the August 21st, 22nd, and 24th events in Israel. And we have people all over the world, in many countries, that have asked us, please, don't, don't post my information on the Internet. How can I do this? Please keep this confidential between us, because I will be killed. Freedom is, is something that people risk their life for every day. The things that we take for granted, people risk their life for every single day. Look at Syria. All they want is a slice. They don't want what you have. A slice of what you have. And they're willing to stand in the streets and be shot. People are willing to stand for Israel and they're willing to be rounded up in the middle of the night. They know the risk they're taking and they're doing it. Freedom is a very delicate thing. What we have here in the United States, beyond your wildest imagination, I've been to third world countries. I know what we have is special. I didn't realize how special it was. When you, uh, when you have countries like England that will, will block entrance or uh, block exit or arrest you for your opinion, for your religious stance, while others are, willing, are, are able to say, oh, we'll chop your head off, we'll behead you, but you cannot have your opinion there in free countries like England. Freedom is being chased into the corner. It's time for us to link arms, square our shoulders, and turn on the lights together.